Okay. Here we are. Can you see all the all of you? Can you see the screen? We can see the screen perfectly. Yes. Okay. Uh, actually, this is a joint work with Sarah Erskovitz, and I hope that she will be able to join. She sent me an email telling me that she has big problems with the with internet, <laughs> and so the, she she was waiting at the end of the mornings for at us. She was waiting for the technician. Well. Uh, what I would like to show you is uh, something, uh, a new work that we did uh, to, to construct plane curve as models of audible orbital moves. Actually, uh, the, all the media in the world were full of, uh, of space and space probes and so on, because last February, three probes from uh, America and uh, United Arab Emirates and uh, China arrived in the vicinity of Mars and actually landed on Mars. The, the American one in February, the Chinese one last week, and the, and the um, Arab probe is orbiting now Mars. And so everyone was interested in that. And uh, this was an, a good opportunity to show models to students that they can handle with uh, very, very nice tools. Actually, according to Kepler Rose, the orbit of a planet around the sun is an ellipse, but most of these ellipses are very close to be circles. And but if we are describing in an exact way, the sun is at the focus of the ellipse. And uh, the a planet orbiting close to its star has a shorter year uh, actually, the speed, the velocity on the orbit is higher when, the, uh, when the, the planet is closer to the sun. Uh, the same thing is right, it's true for uh, artificial satellites who are orbiting around the Earth, and therefore the, the, the International Space Station orbits the, the Earth 16 times a day, when uh, the, on the geostationary geo orbit, something is orbiting exactly one time, uh, actually not, it's synchronous with the, with the Earth. And so here we have the, the length of the years of the different uh, planets. If we have two planets orbiting the Sun, here we have a model uh, showing that the, um, the alignment is very, very seldom. This is what we can uh, actually describe with very, very nice model, and it's quite easy to do it. What we can do is, uh, here we, we have some models. Uh, we took the Earth and Mars, and each one is orbiting the, is orbiting the, the Earth in its own way. And uh, uh, what we could model using GeoGebra, but maybe you don't see my GeoGebra screen, I will show it to you. Uh, and uh, here we can see that uh, of a specific point. Here that we have two points, one representing the blue planet and uh, the other one representing the red planet. And a very uh, non-important point, but it's only for the sake of visualization, something, the, the middle point, the midpoint between the Earth and Mars. And uh, so in a virtual way, it creates uh, a curve. So there are people who are uh, finding esoteric meaning to these curves, I don't. I am interested in, interested in the mathematics here. And actually, we can describe this curve, this curve using uh, a parametric presentation. It's quite easy, and every first year student in university, at least mathematics students or in engineering, know what is a param parametric curve. Sometimes high school students know also, but it's generally not on the main syllabus. But anyway, the very nice curves can be described, uh, and uh, you must have some, uh, let's say, we have to wait uh, a quite long time in order to have a full description. The, the parameter he is here has to, to, to give us more than uh, a, a small number of orbits in order to have a, a, 
a full curve. Uh, I will give that to, to Ryan meanwhile and return back to the presentation. Uh, here we, we can have actually on this picture, we have two different models. The, on the left is the, is the moving the, the curve, the locus of the midpoint between the Earth and Mars. On the right, what we have, it's, it has a more physical meaning because it, it is a curve described by the center of gravity of uh, Mars and the Earth. This is a, an interesting problem that we can modelize for the students using quite easy tools, the parametric presentation. And uh, here you identified that we used GeoGebra. The inference that the various data have is very important. We will uh, speak about that a little bit later. Uh, actually, no, I don't want to, to take this time to do that. And uh, the, the different uh, issues that we have to describe here and to, to think about is first of all, the mathematical meaning versus the physical meaning. Because actually in space, the orbits are not circular and they are not, they are not even in the same plane. There is uh, an inclination of the orbit of Mars uh, with respect to the orbit of uh, the Earth of one degree and a half. Uh, so the inference of rounding in, with GeoGebra, you can round that uh, with two digits after the, after the decimal point, or you can do it with four digits or 10 digits, and the result can be quite different. But you have also this approximation of elliptic orbits, and uh, but we, we approximate them with circles. Here above, it's with the elliptic orbits, with the quite good data, with four digits after the, the, the decimal point. And beneath what we have is circular uh, description using only two digits after the, the decimal point. So we have differences. Of course, engineers will have to be very careful and this uh, may explain, at least for students who are not aware of that, why there are huge teams of engineers which are uh, working 24 seven in order to, to, to ride, let's say, these, these probes. And uh, we have also a problem with the DGS, with the, it's an experimental determination of the domain of definition. Because if we had a parameterization using integer parameters, and the, the, if the, the coefficient of the time would be an integer, it would be quite easy uh, computing a GCD to find how many orbits of each uh, planet we need. But at the, the numbers that we have, are really non-integers, we cannot compute so easily. And so an experimentation has to be done. We have also an experimental determination of the speed of the animations that we need in order to have something that a human being can see and it will not take uh, years in order to have a result. Uh, we have also to appeal to the student's understanding of parametric presentation of curves and sometimes we are asking the question of implicitization, and here it's very, very hard. Actually, uh, this is the determination of a locus with GeoGebra, and GeoGebra has automated tools in order to find locus in some kind of data, but here it cannot work because the data is too heavy and uh, doesn't fit the programmation in GeoGebra. I, will, I want to, to show you just one slide for uh, another experimentation. It's what is called Lagrange points. Lagrange points are five points in space connected to, to two bodies where you can put a satellite and it will be in a stable position. It will see the Earth or what he has to see always the same way. This is a, the, the places where some uh, specific satellites are placed in order to have Earth observation or more generally the space telescopes will be there. For example, the next one which will be launched next uh, fall by the NASA uh, uh, the, will be uh, the, the James Webb telescope will be at the point at the, an external point called L1. And we can have here 
a, a simulation to show how these points are placed in space. Of course, here the, I didn't respect the proportions for the, the for, for the pair Sun Earth. The Lagrange points, at least L1 and L2, are so close to the to the Earth that I could not make this distinction distinction if, uh, using only GeoGebra. But once again, it's possible to bring something new from the actuality to students and to have a mathematical descriptions. The, the animation that you have here beneath is what happens with uh, the uh, one of the very important probes launched by, by the NASA 10 years ago, close to one of these Lagrange points. But as everything moves in space, and actually the gravitational influence is not only from the Earth and the Sun, but also Mars and Uranus and Jupiter and so on. So everything has to be computed. And the, for us, looking at that, the, the actual trajectory is quite complicated, but we can have nice simulation easier simulation to show to students. Probably not middle school, some of the specific students in high school, but generally more in undergraduates. And what we can earn from that is uh, a lot of things. We can build math activities with the DGS related to actuality. So it can attract students and increase their interest in that. We have an opportunity, and for those people who are following the probes and the robots on Mars, you will understand all the, all the terms here. We have an opportunity to check the influence of approximation. If we are do, taking two digits, four digits, 10 digits, or if we are taking circles instead of ellipses, even if the eccentricity of these ellipses is quite small. The impossibility to have exact result. This is a very old problem, the fact that there is no analytic answer to the problem of free bodies. We have an extension of the curriculum because what I described here is never written in the curriculum, neither in high school nor for undergraduates. But there are some interested students who want something more. And from time to time, I can, uh, Sarah, also we can provide to some students who want something more uh, an extracurricular uh, endeavor. And if we have uh, some perseverance, we will have more results and more activities to propose to our students. And so with some ingenuity, we can wait for other surprises. And the big surprise that we can have is that we can construct a lot of other curves using theoretical planets or theoretical constructions. I told you the midpoint between two planets has no physical meaning, but uh, people are drawing very nice curves. You can see one example here on the, on the right and using these tools that we have in our hands. But sometimes the surprise that we have is that these curves that we are describing and constructing appear not to be isolated curves, one example and another an example, but they appear to belong to one family and very classical curves that we learned that, or that we discovered in books as different curves. There are catalogs of plane algebraic curves. And in these catalogs that are presented as different, as totally separated, we can find them as members of a parametric family with a continuous deformation from one side to the, from one kind to the other, another kind. Cardioids and nephroids and so on are actually belonging a lot of time to the same family. So- um, I, I lost track of time because it was so interesting. Uh, you still have one more minute, I'm sorry. Yes. I have my watch here, I, I do. Thank you for telling me. And uh, so there is a lot of uh, benefits that students can have. It depends on their personal interest. It depends on their mathematical background. It depends on a lot of things, but the, the most important thing is their motivation. By the way, have a look on the right. You have an analemma. It's a very specific curve. It's not a plain curve, but if you are making a photo of, a, of the sun, every day at the same place in the same direction, you will obtain such a curve. It will depend on the latitude and the longitude of where you are, but this is a kind of curve and it's possible, it's an experiment. And so 
Sarah and I are waiting for you on Mars because we have already our boarding cards and uh, we can there make other experimentation having the Earth turning around us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Noah. Let's meet on Mars. Yes, why not? 20. Uh, 2026. So um, I'm I'm not a mathematician, but um, th this talk just g g really wants me to 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 go back to university and st study math <laughs> for the extra curriculum. So, um, but I hope uh, plenty of our uh, of our watchers are um, are having questions uh, that to you addressed to you. So. Who wants to go first? Yeah. Can I? Yes. Okay, yes. Thank you very much. Um, what you what you just showed this is so amazing, and it just reminded me so much um, of of the games that Diego made. It would be so great having these curves as actual objects and and creating games out of it. You know, like you once showed us windows in cathedrals that had. Um, interesting mathematically interesting windows and this basically looks like those beautiful colorful windows you know so what it's more are, more like a comment but you it's are amazing. totally right have a look at that i don't know whether you can see it really this is the window yeah yeah absolutely this is this, is, this is the main window the main rosette in the main facade of the uh, of the Dohani Synagogue in Budapest, mm -hmm. we had a an, an mathematical activity with students for, to recreate that. But this artifact has been created with three D printing by somebody you don't know, Diego. Oh, yeah. Okay, even more amazing. I had this, this as a gift during uh, my visit for my last visit where I could meet him in Linz. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we are totally right. We can do that. Yeah. And, uh, so that mixing what you presented yesterday and what Branco presented yesterday and there is Met City and so on, there is there is an opportunity to do something like that and to have this yes, curve. In this space. is so amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah. It is imp You're inspiring. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I'm somewhere over there. My name is already on Mars. <laughs> with the last probe. So, any other questions or comments from the group? I mean, also, if uh, something occurs later, uh, I think Noah is still here with us uh, for a bit. Um, uh, I have to teach in 15 minutes. Okay. So, <laughs> instead, instead of being in Mars, I have to go down three floors. I understood. So, 15. So, no, if, if I had a question, I can now, but I, I'm afraid that uh, when I will finish teaching, the session will be over. Okay. Yes, but so we have your contact. That's a problem right? so to, have, to have conferences uh, by, by uh, distance, uh, by video conference. So, as I am on the spot, I cannot say that I can I don't come to, to teach and I want somebody to replace me. Um, so, I. Uh, I will yeah, I can I make guess you a, can... a question myself. Hi, um, a very interesting presentation. Um, I am a, a, a mathematician and uh, I uh, used to um, uh, take problems out of uh, celestial mechanics, so orbits and so on. So, it, 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 but the, the model is very interesting. What um, a question, or what I can uh, uh, tell you is uh, that, um, of, of course, uh, the the number of uh, of, of small uh, loops on the on the cycloid is uh, related to the ratio of uh, of the two periods. No? So you can also um, uh, try to. To model uh, the the situation and try to predict what the number is uh, related to something some knowledge about uh, the the motion the yes yes for analysis, sure etc. Yeah. That's very interesting for physical yeah understanding. Yes, for sure. you, you are you are totally right. Uh, I'm I'm I was 
interested in trying uh, something uh, closer to the, let's say, true situation. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I had to, to find, I took the, a, a table from the, the website of the NASA to have the, the actual uh, data uh, about the, the planets and the eccentricity yeah. and so on in order to, to try what I can present to the students and hoping that uh, they will cope with that. Uh, but uh, for sure, uh, it's better to do what you propose and uh, to, to begin with smaller numbers for them to, to visualize that it's possible and then to, to extend. Maybe I jumped too high at the first step. Thank you very much. So um, I, um, I I was just uh, writing uh, with Eva because um, the next presenter on our schedule, uh, Cetra, I, I didn't see the presenter. Um, so uh, Ike is, is, is here and could uh, switch for this for this uh, spot. Is this, is this right? Am I informed correctly? Yes, I would suggest um, that we have a presenter from the morning. Thank you very much, Noah. Bye have bye. a great and time presenting. Hopefully to, you will be back. Uh, apology not to stay with you, I would like, but yes. teaching duties. Yeah, yeah. And students before everything. Bye bye. 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 Like a true teacher. Goodbye. Bye. Um, so we thought we have we have a, a speaker that did not have the chance to speak in the morning, and we could have that now. Are you up for that? Then I would say, when I give the floor to to. Yes, perfect. Okay. Thank you so much for this occasion. Okay, I want to share screen my presentation. Okay, lesson study based on STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics answer to the challenge of industrial revolution 4.0. Could you maybe introduce yourself also? Um, oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, I will introduce myself first. My name is Kuchisti Ikerat Nanintia Surya Putra from SMP Negeri 13, Surakarta, Central Java, Indonesia. Thank yeah. you. Okay, my pleasure. Okay, my title paper is Lesson Study Based on STEM. Answer to challenge for industrial revolution 4.0. The background, industry 4.0 is a necessity that must be faced by my, our nation. Industrial revolution 4.0 is a situation where the industry will depend on the use of computers that are connected to each other and in the end, the connection between computers can make decisions without human intervention. This industrial revolution as a transformation toward integrating the online world and production lines in the industry will the internet as the main foothold. To deal this situation, preparation is needed from various aspects, among which the most needed to be touched in the aspect of readiness of human resources. The school is an institution that has very important role in preparing 21st century skilled human resources, which includes collaboration, communication, cooperation, and critical thinking. The role of school is vital because schools are a place for the transfer of knowledge from teacher to students integrated in a holistic unity supported by stakeholders to realize millennial generation with the readiness of 21st century skill is not easy. Fact related to the learning process in the classroom, 
Most teachers still use less varied methods. Classes are still dominated by teachers. Students are not much in full fit in the process of finding information and their learning experiences because the learning process is not based on problems as had not been centered on students resulting in low skill in collaborating, cooperating, communicating, and thinking critically on students. This is certainly a problem in order to prepare the nation young generation to face the era of globalization, the digital era, and the era of industry 4.0 at this time, which inevitably and like it or not must be fed by the Indonesian people. Students tend to be passive, becoming listener, and are not much directly involved in the learning process. Based on the explanation above, so a gap between reality and ideality, schools that so have been able to create an environment conducive to preparing students of 21st century scale, but the reality has not yet been realized. 21st century skills, how today students can stay competitive in a changing job market, like learning skills, critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and communication, literacy skill, information, media, and technology, life skill, flexibility, leadership, initiative, productivity, and social. Solution with STEM education. Through STEM-based lesson studies, with the revitalization on optimization in school by school principal is, an, is in a plan, patterned and programmed manner will change teacher behavior in improving the quality of learning to realize the skill of 21st century students to meet the industrial revolution 4.0. Lesson study as a coaching effort in improving the process of teaching and learning activities carried out by a group teachers was originally developed in Japan. Understanding lesson study is a model of teacher coaching with the study of collaborative and continuous learning to achieve the goal of solving learning problems that focus on students and specific material that is considered important and difficult. The stage of lesson study include the stage of planning, implementation, and reflection that the interrelated and gradual. Conclusion, STEM and lesson study to 21st century skill for our student. Whereas STEM is a learning approach that integrated a variety of scientific disciplines, including science, technology, engineering, and mathematics that are interconnected and in the learning process. The purpose of STEM is that student learning increases and is connected to real life and the global world. Thank you so much. Thank you. Kuchisti, is that pronounced correctly? <laughs> Your name? Thank you. Um, for me, this is especially interesting because I'm, I'm familiar with STEM education and also with the, the lesson study. And I, I, I didn't know that it's so inter, uh, international. So um, what we did here in, um, in our practice with teachers was uh, with, with teacher students was also the lesson study and the idea of combining the, those approaches uh, I think it's 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 really smart and I would wonder um, if you have an, any experience with um, in the practice did you try this out in practice thank you so much yes I have combined it about lesson study and STEM in our school. Can I ask something else? Yeah. Um, what uh, you said before that the schools are not low, re revolving around problems. Um, 
to me, this always feels like it puts very much uh, pressure on teachers because it means that they have to come up with problems and they have maybe a lot of students to look um, on and probably it's really hard for them to give grades because if we have a fixed setup, then the teacher always knows, okay, if a student did this and that, I will give him a good grade. But if it is around problem solving, and if it is a problem that just came up, then I find it really difficult for the teacher to know, okay, was this solved yet nicely, or, or was it solved uh, not that good? And, and how should I give grades to the student? Maybe this can be an obstacle. Okay, um, in our school, our teachers, um, do lesson study, and then there are um, act their lesson plan in um, class a class, and then uh, we will reflection about that, and after that we do that lesson plan in all class like that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, if there aren't any more questions, um, I saw that uh, Citra, she, she, she um, uh, the presenter, I'm not sure if this is a uh, um, uh, man <laughs> or a woman, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the, those names, but um, it came later. But uh, I think uh, Corrado Falculini is already waiting for the third spot. And uh, Cetra, let me see if I if I find a, a spot somewhere for you that for your presentation. Next one, uh, please, uh, Corrado, um, you can you can share your screen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, let me see. Just a second. Okay. Um, okay. Here. And you see it. Okay. Is that okay? Yes, perfect. Yes. So uh, I am uh, Corrado Falcolini from uh, Roma 3 University and I uh, will uh, talk about uh, solving challenging problems using GeoGebra and I will uh, stress the word uh, challenging about the problems. So I tried uh, to uh, <clears throat> show three pictures that uh, tells about uh, uh, Question, complex uh, questions or complex uh, realization somehow. So um, to, to underline this uh, word uh, challenging. Um, the, 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 the use of problem solving inspired by computer-aided algorithms and visualization as become a common example of STEAM education in geometry and its application. Uh, I posed already some uh, um, example of uh, possible uh, uh, mathematical uh, problems. Um, uh, yesterday, uh, Usam Kasti spoke about the teachers as designers. If you remember, if you were there, uh, he said that they should uh, design challenges uh, I like very much uh, uh, one of his uh, expression. And uh, in fact, when the problems are challenging, um, they, are, uh, they can uh, at attract uh, students and people, and, uh, and they are also suitable to be organized in cooperative or distance learning. Because the process of solving the problem is, it can be long, uh, can be taken by steps and the steps can be divided 
and uh, posted or uh, or sent uh, to students and uh, waiting for answers and so on. Uh, most of the subject, uh, in fact, have been used in a course that I had been uh, teaching for future high school teachers, um, also in this uh, COVID year, so at a distance um, with, uh, with this sort of students. Um, uh, the in fact the use of uh, interactive geometric software and also symbolic calculus uh, um, and the graphical solutions uh, allows to go back to the abstract nature of the problem, uh, generalizing it, posing new questions. So uh, the applications uh, I think are uh, interesting in education uh, exactly or also because of this uh, abstract nature that one can grasp, can go back and think again. Um, so the, the teams uh, have a, a, a wide range and I can uh, start uh, saying uh, more. So uh, I would like in these few minutes to talk of the problems and show something just to have uh, an intuitive uh, idea of, uh, of the subject. So uh, I will stress uh, three problems uh, very quickly. One is uh, which kind of symmetry inspired some of Asher's work? It was the first picture in my uh, first slide. Uh, so which kind of symmetry? It doesn't look very symmetric, the picture. Second uh, problem, which family of the right circular cones share the same XY plane section? So uh, I will be more uh, specific. And uh, the third, how to make the tiles for an, an aperiodic tessellation? So these are the three problems. Uh, let me say some words on the first. Um, uh, the, the, the kind of symmetry, in fact, uh, it, it's well known. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, the, uh, it's an hyperbolic symmetry in the so-called Poincaré disk. So, but uh, let me stress the, the, the interesting fact uh, here in the, in the temple of GeoGebra is that uh, uh, the entire geometry of uh, Poincaré disk uh, and uh, the symmetric constructions inside this geometry are based on the circular inversion transformation. So it's a very simple transformation, which is standard in GeoGebra. So you can take uh, among the reflection, rotation, and uh, circular inversion, okay? Um, uh, let me go, uh, then I will go back uh, to the, the other two problems. So uh, I want to show you the, um, uh, sorry, uh, I started with the uh, parabolic thing. No, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I don't want this, I want to go on. Sorry, uh, I inverted the order. So I spoke about the, this picture, this Asher work, which is called the circular limit four. And uh, the idea here, the solution, let's say, is that uh, the, the um, hexagonal uh, curved uh, uh, polygons that you see in this picture, the blue lines, are in this uh, strange geometry, are all uh, um, congruent, let's say. So they have, uh, they, share the they have the same length. In fact, they are all regular hexagons all right so they change their shape because of the of the distance from the center of the disk of the center of this strange geometry the interesting thing is that uh, uh, um, one can uh, one can uh, see the, the the reflection and i can uh, uh, show you um, the property of this uh, tessellation or this uh, uh, symmetry. And the point is that the regular hexagon is determined by the point E, but if you change the point, the 
traction changes. And in fact, when E is very close to the center, the tessellation is a regular, uh, is very close to the regular mm -hmm. Euclidean tessellation of hexagons. But for a precise value of uh, the distance uh, R, there is uh, an exact uh, tessellation. This is because in this strange geometry, the polygons uh, change angles uh, when the vertices are uh, uh, far away from the center. Okay. So if you, we go farther away with the point E, we get a tessellation where we have, uh, you see five uh, different uh, hex hexagons uh, on a vertex instead of four or instead of three in the Euclidean uh, limited, all right? So in fact, in this geometry, uh, the tessellation can be made out of uh, uh, any regular uh, polygon for any uh, n-sided uh, polygon, right? And what I want to show is that uh, this uh, uh, animation, of course, is possible uh, uh, thanks to GeoGebra. And uh, the other uh, thing, and, and was uh, also, I, I posed the, 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 the question to the students without giving them the solution, but uh, uh, um, uh, showing them uh, the property of this, uh, this geometry of the disk, not the solution on the symmetry. But the other interesting thing, the, 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 the challenging problems, is that now you can ask why exactly distance 0 0.5176 there is this, uh, um, and why uh, the other uh, value uh, with, with a different symmetry was 0 0.6395. Is it possible to calculate them? And then I want to show you this uh, uh, picture with the mathematics that is needed exactly. I try to represent the problem uh, geometrical. So you, you can see the hexagon in green. You can see the angle, the inside angle, gamma. And you see in the formula, tangent gamma, in the third lines, which depends on R. You see? One, uh, so this dependence means uh, uh, well, uh, it's a, a geometrical construction that uh, demonstrates, uh, let's say, uh, directly uh, or try to demonstrate uh, 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 how the angle changes. And if the angle uh, becomes exactly 2 pi over uh, 4, you will get uh, six uh, uh, possible hexagon meet together on the vertices. So this condition can be made, and I want to stress that the value of the of the of r that we used in the symmetry in the previous uh, slides it was 0 0.5176 but in fact it is exactly this uh, radical value square root of 1 minus 2 square root of 3 you still have one minute okay so i i i don't have a uh, 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 time to show the the other problem let me uh, show only this uh, uh, slide. Um, so probably I have to go back here. Which family of bright circular cone shade the same uh, plane section y equal to x square? So starting from the, uh, the simplest parabola on a sheet of paper, how to construct the cone on the three-dimensional space out of this sheet of paper? This is the this is the question, and. Uh, and in fact, the, the solution is this one. Uh, it, 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 it starts with lines and then with, uh, with the vertex of the cone, the lines are on the, on the y, z plane. And, uh, and this uh, vertex can uh, uh, help in drawing the cone. And this is in fact one solution, which is interesting. Imagine to to get the cone out of a sheet of paper on a student uh, work uh, exercise, okay? And, but the interesting thing is that you can solve the problem of the logic of the vertex of the cones, which share the same, uh, which share the same intersection. And GeoGebra helps you to find that this is in fact correct. So let me end up uh, with these images, thank you. Thank you, Corrado. Um, um, 
Yes, sorry, yeah. let me go. Uh, let me go at the end uh, just to, to say thank you and, uh, and telling of, uh, of a site where you can find uh, some information about uh, what I show you. This, this is very useful. Thank you for sharing. Um, I, I was thinking this is exactly what um, be, being a student in like the kind of visualization. I was so um, amazed by this uh, opportunity because uh, I really had problems th during that time to imagine that uh, cuts. Um, okay, I open the discussion. Thank you. Uh, I just have one remark. I, I will have to show this to, to Diego. He will just freak out. It will, he will love this so much. <laughs> Thank you. I, ho I hope I hope to, I to make uh, contacts uh, yeah with you, you and the other team oh, I, I, I'm, I bet that you would really love this oh this is so great fact, thank uh, you very much for fact, sharing Christoph uh, Finivesi yeah. uh, told me about uh, this uh, this opportunity and I was very happy to participate oh it's, it's thank amazing thank you to you organizers oh great thank you also for giving us your information here. Um, I will give it to Diego and I'm sure he will contact you. Um, by watching the time, would it be okay uh, to go on to the next presenter? And if questions uh, still come up, I think um, we, can, we can use the chat function also. So uh, yeah. according to the schedule, Duri Shavar would be next, but... Um, I, I don't know, I didn't see her in... Are you there, Duri? For him? No? Then maybe this is a good uh, time spot for Setra, who came later. Um, if you are ready now, you could uh, present now your presentation. Are you there? Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Take your time. Can you hear my voice? Yes, yes, loud and clear. Perfect. Sorry, can you hear my voice? Perfect, perfect. Oh, yeah. Slide, uh, you can share your slides. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay, Okay, well, uh, Good afternoon, everyone. And maybe in Indonesia now is uh, uh, evening. So uh, first, I, I would like to thank you to Eva and Petra for giving me a chance to present our work. And I'm so sorry that I couldn't participate in the whole program. First, it's not really good time for, for me, especially uh, when my son uh, is sick and I have to take him to the doctor this afternoon, uh, this evening. And luckily, I can join uh, for presenting my my work. Well, uh, at the lead, this is like uh, the title for this uh, presentation is about prospective uh, elementary teachers' first experience in designing GeoGebra learning activities. Uh, this work uh, we got uh, this funding from uh, national government from the government uh, Ministry of uh, Research uh, this year, and this is the first time we conduct a research using GeoGebra. So this is like first experience for us. And we would like to get feedback from all you all, from you all who has uh, many experience doing a research with GeoGebra. Well, uh, as we know that about the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has uh, spread to the world, and so uh, so education program changed from from like face-to-face -face learning to using ICT. The fourth, uh, because I need of for ICT in learning mathematics, and we consider that there's a such a big challenge to try to like say to use a GeoGebra and to support a uh, primary school, like a uh, pre-service elementary teacher to, to develop uh, such an activity so they can create activity using GeoGebra. Well, uh, in the previous study, in the short study, we conducted a systematic review about GeoGebra used in the university in Indonesia. And uh, we found that uh, many research conduct uh, research with a uh, pre-service mathematics teacher and we only found uh, one research with uh, pre-service elementary teachers. So we consider there is such a potential for us to implementation, to implement the GeoGebra in prospective elementary teacher in Indonesia, and also to support them how to use GeoGebra. So 
next time they can uh, apply in the classroom. So for the present study, uh, I would like to present a preliminary result from the implementation of project based learning. We use a project based learning where first experience of police office elementary church designing GeoGebra learning activity. So this is such a first time for them to experience using GeoGebra and also for us as a researcher. And then the second, we, we would like to present example of uh, their work, uh, their activity they have constructed using GeoGebra. And the third one is we would like to present uh, some perspective or let's say reflection from them after working with GeoGebra. And actually this project is still on the progress. So the, the final uh, final design of the activity from the, from the student uh, are not completed yet. Well, uh, we call that we use a uh, didactic engineering with a set of uh, teacher education from Berkeley uh, and Boss, where there is a set clause for designing from the uh, priori analysis into posteriori analysis. In this specific study, uh, we would like to uh, we work with uh, 38 second year student teachers from an elementary teacher study program from University of Riau. And it's mean that they have already uh, taken some course on mathematics and also on mathematics education. And during this study, they took a course on, uh, uh, on teaching instruction on upper, upper primary school students. Well, the participant work in small group to up to four participants to design the clock learning activities in GeoGebra. So in this uh, occasion, we like to present and uh, analyze uh, the learning activities they have constructed and and so what uh, the reflection from doing this project. And this is the result. Uh, we found that uh, there's, there's uh, many, uh, many group tends to develop the activity of like say uh, about area and circumference of uh, square and rectangles. And it, we can understand that's such a, a simple uh, task where they can use and create, but also such a meaningful for primary school students to understand the concept of uh, area and, uh, and also uh, the circumference. And this, besides doing uh, doing a reset, uh, like uh, constructing an activity on on area and all, but some students also construct the activity such as uh, about a uh, fraction, and it is such an interesting also topic for for us and also for them such a challenging to create. And is this still an ongoing uh, project? We can say that it's not like a, uh, completed yet. So the student, a group of students develop an activity about adding fraction. And, and this one of the work that they saw us about uh, how to show the, like say, diagram representation for the addition of fraction. And this is two tasks that we found interesting, but then, uh, at least we, 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 we get 13 uh, different type of uh, tasks that maybe we cannot, uh, as uh, present all of them and still on the progress and maybe to some extent we can uh, discuss and show some results later. And then uh, the second thing is we conduct like uh, we ask them a reflection from what the challenge uh, the, they encountered during uh, designing this project. And this is one of the results from student uh, teacher where they say that the first thing of course, the lack of understanding about JJ platform uh, it's making them uh, making difficult for them to create an, an activity or edit it. We can understand it because in in our study program there is no such a course uh, focusing on like say uh, uh, coding or related to the computer science or, or making like what we call uh, how to sorry will be course <laughs> sorry uh, and then the second one is the network is not good enough and such an infrastructure problem in Indonesia. And because of a coronavirus and the students go back to their hometown and the, some of them live in, in let's say in a remote area where they cannot access internet. So it's such a challenging for them to discuss with uh, their team. And the third one is also such a, a problem beside their understanding about the GeoGebra itself is about the, the laptop they use is not such a supportive and like are not so up to, up to date and therefore it's quite difficult for them when discuss using uh, Google Meet and, and open the GeoGebra application. Such challenging and where we cannot uh, solve is such an infrastructure challenging, we can say that. And another problem we can see that uh, also speak about the technical problem and creating a GeoGebra problem and especially... Uh, Sorry. 
Sorry, so, sorry. Uh, I I I pressed the wrong button. Oh my god! So, I... so sorry. I'm back. So I'm sorry. Back. Yeah. Okay. We oh, we yeah. can go back to the breakout session. I will right? try. I will try oh, share yeah. again. again. Okay. So okay. Sorry. We go go back. Okay. You can see again. Yes. 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 So sorry. Yes, I, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I will repeat. For example. Um, the number three. Sorry, I think you have to go back. You have to stop sharing, go back to your room, and then share again. No. And again, so, I will, I will share it again. So wait, please. We have to open the breakout rooms again. First. Yes. Who is going to open the breakout rooms? Yeah, I will. I will do it. Okay. Thank you. Wow, sorry, 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 sorry. Carla saved the day and sent us back. Thank okay. you, Carla. I will say, I will tell her thanks. Thanks. We can't hear the sound. Okay, okay, can I continue my presentation? Well. Uh, here is the second uh, uh, what we call communication from the student teacher where they say that also about the technical problem in material pressure or algebra problem. And the most important thing is say that uh, here, uh, where the, the problem is that like we thought it was too complex to work with if we don't, we didn't use other paper problems. So they tend to use someone uh, task that has been designed by someone else and then Try to change the like translate uh, the block into Indonesian uh, more Indonesians uh, what we call Indonesian problems so the student can understand. And the procedure for making the button or the function in it are like making a script in coding. So the lack of knowledge about coding or maybe also the never take a course or related to the to the computer science so it's become a challenging for them. And but we can see that they use tend to use a YouTube to look at uh, how the people uh, design and develop some uh, uh, some activities on using JGebra. So from this uh, presentation, uh, we we get uh, like say we found something interesting. Like first, uh, we 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 think that many student uh, teachers could design and develop some activity, but it's based on activities designed by others. Uh, they tend to like uh, what we call copy uh, that, that someone uh, design and develop into an Indonesian context or Indonesian text so Indonesian students can use it better. And as we know that there's an internet connection and also poor computer performance become a big challenge for the, maybe for the future or for the next time when the, the like hybrid learning uh, can occur in, this, in the university, maybe we can use a computer in the, in, in the institution. And then the third one is lack of knowledge about computer programming become another barrier for uh, them to design GeoGebra activities. Maybe uh, this is such a, a thing, a good thing to consider to add such a course related to uh, maybe like a coding and computer programming, a simple com computer programming that can uh, like say improve their knowledge and also the skill to create an activity using GeoGebra. And the, third, the, the last one, we consider the instructional video, uh, YouTube could be a media supporting pre-service of individual knowledge and skill on designing and develop activities using GeoGebra. And maybe we can, uh, like say, uh, develop for some, for the next feature, select some activity on YouTube as, an, as, a, as a media that can be bring that can that we can bring into the classroom so they can learn from that's uh that's uh let's say this video so this uh the, the, the i can say this like uh early result from our study and still many things to do and develop and we expect like i get a uh, feedback and suggestion from you all thank you thank you cetra it was very interesting and <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'm sure that there are uh, there are questions and and comments and I see applause and I read um, a comment by uh, Enda. Do you want to address it yourself? You can speak if you want.
other uh, ways I will just read it. Um, the, the, uh, um, this is, it says the same as our experience in East Java uh, and uh, it related problem and also related challenging to implement geo to brand COVID-19 pandemic. So um, you experienced the same uh, problems. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I agree with uh, her because we are in the same, uh, let's say, same board in the same country, so still have okay. problems with the infrastructure as well. Um, um, Pieda okay. has a question. Okay. Okay, what eggs, uh, actually from eggs, uh, six or seven until 12 years old, for primary school in Indonesia, I think also almost similar with other country, I guess. And the task designed by the student is for uh, like upper primary school grade, something from grade four to to to, to six, so from uh, from ten to twelve years old. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Not clear for me. Well, the the correspondence is in your in your system, in your educa educational system, because in Spain it's a little different. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you. Great, great experience. I like yeah, it very yeah, much. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, I, I, I have a comment. Uh, you said that one of the main difficulty was to use the instruments, to create new instruments inside your jetty. And in fact, uh, um, I had this problem some times ago and I would say that uh, it's not immediate, but uh, the, the, the instrument button uh, um, it works very well once you understand some uh, the steps that you, need, that you need to. So to solve the, 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 if you solve the problem once, then you get uh, the full uh, activity of new instruments. And, uh, and the use of GeoGebra is very, it increase, uh, increase a lot. So I agree with you that, uh, that uh, something more is needed in uh, communicating the use of such instruments. Okay, thank you for your uh, I can, uh, suggestion. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you want, uh, I can uh, uh, tell you something. If you write to me, the, I can uh, share some uh, oh yeah yeah great some experience of mine if you like okay I will contact you in person the yeah. in, the, in the chat okay thank you for and, and I see Endang is here so maybe you want to uh, introduce yourself in the project to the group okay thank you okay thank you I'm still here uh, I am I'm agree with Mas uh, uh, Howo presented. Uh, this uh, explanatory today because we are in the same country, Indonesia. Uh, in Indonesia, we as an elementary school is have uh, so many big problem uh, because Indonesia is uh, in suburban, suburban and rural area. So the internet uh, connectivity and uh, some of uh, facilities is not so good as same as in Austria and another country in in the world so GeoGebra is a new is a new new project and it is a very need more more challenging for our as a teacher in Indonesia to to introducing GeoGebra and implementing it in math education in primary level um, be, uh, without the, the support from another participant such as government Indonesian, we maybe cannot implement it by ourselves because GeoGebra exactly is simple to access. We can using mobile GeoGebra setting, but uh, it is uh, new. This is new for Indonesian teacher in Indonesia uh, because uh, we have not access. We have not access. So, easily more than another we can do in another project in Indonesia just like this maybe this is based on our experience as an elementary school teacher okay thank you for for sharing this. yes thank you thank you, thank you. <laughs> 
uh, I, I think it's it's really important to to remind that uh, the, the situations in, in in country and as you pointed out the rural and the 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 uh, more the city spaces are, are very different and uh, maybe it's really the two two ways that if you started the innovation then maybe politics will follow and <laughs> make the good internet connection but it's a slow process i guess yes um, yes yes sure so uh, then we um I, I say thank you to for the presentation again it was again really really inspiring and um it's good to see what's what's happening around the globe in in different countries and uh, for uh, our last presenter uh Ulla Paralupi um, will, will share her screens and um, I got the message that we can take so the time we need and then go, go back to the, uh, to the main room, how, however suitable. Okay, Ulla, welcome. So you can see my screen. Yep. Yes. Perfect. Yes, perfect. perfect. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ulla Paralupi and I'm a first year PhD student from JQU, from Austria. My PhD thesis deals with the professional identity of female principals in primary school, motives and background of the career choice. Why did I choose this topic? Um, teachers in schools are mostly female. According to Statistics Austria in 2019, 71% of teachers were female. In compulsory schools, about 80% of the teachers are female. In primary school, the number of female teachers is even higher. They account for 90%. On the other hand, only 83% of the principals in primary schools are female. But not only in leading positions in schools, but also in the business world, women are underrepresented. Discrimination, according to gender, cannot be justified in the 21st century. According to Statistic Austria, 69.2% of women and 73.6% of men is employed. The amount of female students is even higher than the amount of male students. So theoretically, there should be not any problem of underrepresentation of women in leading positions. But unfortunately, it is the case. Possible reasons for this could be expectations from society, burden combining family and career and gender related stereotypes. Um, on this slide, you can see how I am planning to structure my, my work. Um, I will start with an introduction and theoretical part consisting of definition of identity, equal opportunities, motives of career choice and discrimination women and employment, women's academic education, public supporting measures for women, factors which are helpful to the career and factors which hinder the career, tasks of principal in primary schools, how principals are selected and leadership concepts in schools. And it will be followed by an empirical part, which I am going to outline now. It's as it aims to um, to follow the the four research questions. The first one is what are the reasons or motives why women chose to become a principal. Second one is what kind of background have female principals in common. Third one is why uh, which factors influence their career in a positive or in a negative way. And the last one should be how can women be supported to take on leadership roles in schools. Um, for, my, for my study, I, I would like to compare a few other studies because there are some relevant and interesting um, regarding female principles in schools, um, like the study from Mechthild von Lutzer, Angela Vorberg, Petra Herzmann, Roland Storat, or Luisa Winkerhager Schmidt. But there are no recent, um, recent studies concerning female principals in primary schools, and especially not from Austria. Um, by means of this study, I would like to prove whether my findings show a change compared to older studies. And the answers from the interviews will help to identify which factors influence the career in a positive or in a negative way, 
And additionally, I would like to elaborate on what politics and society could do to motivate more women to take up lead, leading positions in schools. Ultimately, this study is intended to stimulate and provide recommendations to the public debate on how to support women to take on leadership roles and highlight possible fields of intervention to other academics and to policymakers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ulla. And my heart is beating as a women, uh, woman <laughs> and a teacher <laughs> to have um, to have this not only investigated but on also with the the idea of um, what does it take to to uh, encourage um, female teachers to apply for the leadership position or to see themselves fit for that. So I'm very interesting on uh, what the results will be of your of your of your investigation. Um, any questions or comments? The title of your dissertation. I think uh, it's not finished yet. But um, what's the title right now? Um, the title is "Professional Identity of Female Principals in Primary School: Motives and Background of the Career Choice." Uh, for, for sure. Can, I have a question. Uh, hi, for, for sure you have uh, in your study, you have uh, 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 read the uh, um, comparison between the situation in different countries. Not yet, but, but Not I yet. will. I mean, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting uh, project on, on new data and uh, interviews and uh, and to, to, to let uh, this uh, argument uh, to circulate and be investigated uh, even more and connection with uh, other countries. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. But um, it, it just makes me curious, does any one of the group have some uh, experience from uh, how, how is it with the, the principal position in, in schools and uh, uh, the, the content of female as and uh, male um, principles percentage. I would say that the, the percentage. Uh, I, I've not read the, the studies on this, but I have a few children, so uh, this is my dire direct experience. So it's very local, but uh, uh, I think the percentage of uh, of uh, uh, female teachers is uh, probably close to the one that was presented, and uh, and uh, I know many. Uh, I I met many principals, uh, usually female, uh, in fact. But uh, but the, the fact that the number of uh, of uh, male teachers is so uh, low, in fact, uh, can uh, can. Um, I mean, it's a double-faced uh, um, uh, aspect uh, of, uh, I think, of the same problem. Uh, I have an, an experience, just to finish, of uh, a very, very good uh, um, primary school teacher for my sons, uh, which uh, is a male. And, uh, and in fact, he worked with a female teacher. So there was this couple for five years of primary school. It worked uh, perfectly well, and so I had the uh, experience of a um, um, very uh, helpful uh, um, um, uh, uh, very helpful uh, uh, equilibrium uh, uh, situation, equilibrate situation. I would say, I don't know. Yeah, interesting. Um... Eva pointed out uh, that um, if, if there are any uh, countries where it's uh, where a different picture shows in in, in the percentage, um. yeah, I don't know. But is there any country at all where where we have a less dire situation actually, especially for primary school? Yeah. I I don't know. Maybe maybe Iceland. I have no idea. Is is there some role model, some yeah. benchmark that we could reach? Interesting. Yeah. Probably the North countries. I'm just guessing here. North European, I mean. But
Thank you for raising the subject, though. Yes, it's a really important question. I believe it's going to be a big issue tomorrow, especially in the afternoon, when we talk to the ministry. Very good. Can we, and to yeah. the ministry people. Actually, in, yeah, sorry. Just go ahead. No, I mean, actually, in, in, based on my experience as a, as a lecturer in, uh, in the primary education, and that also shifting from, in, in Indonesia, shifting from like a male principal into female principal. Especially in the in the I mean in the in the in the city we tend to find more uh, female principal now than compared to like say ten or fifteen years ago. That's just based on my experience when I when I was a uh, like kid I, I I tend to find like a male principal but now shift into female principal and also because of the number of female uh, female uh, student at the university in a teacher training is like. In, for instance, in our department, like uh, can say one point one compared to ten uh, female, so one male and compared to ten female, and also this 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 a case again. Okay. How did that change? How did you manage to do that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, if we compare what like uh, since the last uh, five or ten years, the government uh, like uh, like created uh, the, like supporting teachers as one of the good uh, job. For, for, for the graduation uh, at the university and they give like a special, uh, let's say certification uh, to as a teacher, as a, as a profession, something like that. Okay. And so the, the teacher get extra, extra, let's say extra salary compared to other uh, job. The for many, many people now, uh, like a, a senior high school student tend to choose, uh, uh, to choose uh, such as uh, to be a teacher, such as uh, one of the favorite, uh, uh, let's say proper job or a profession for the future in Indonesia and especially like such as in the university in our university and, and to be a primary school teacher is the second highest uh, what we call uh, highest uh, competition so under mm -hmm. the maybe the top one is like to be a doctor and the second uh, second rank is uh, to be a primary school teacher in Indonesia such a, a big uh, wow. change in, in wow. the, the probability to be a primary school teacher actually and i we hope that by getting like a good and much better uh, student and also can change the education in our country especially in primary school oh, yeah, I that's the, that. yeah amazing so, yeah yeah such an interesting topic to, to to investigate for the next time i guess Mm -hmm. Someone who like uh, doing a comparative study and as a try also look into the future of the education in different countries. I guess. Yeah. Thanks okay. for pointing that out. I, I think it really makes a difference whether the, this is a job that strips society uh, and also politics. So regarding the salary, uh, appreciated and and then and, and uh, prestige has some sort of. Um, so if I say I'm a primary school teacher, usually in Austria, because I am a primary school teacher for, for 12 years, so you don't get a lot of acknowledgement. Uh, rather, they would maybe pity you or, or say, OK, you have two, two months uh, holiday, so uh, like a lucky bastard. <laughs> so uh, and it's, it's not really appreciating yeah. the, the work you do, because everybody thinks I can teach primary school. It's easy. Uh, but it's not about the, co the content. Of course, I don't have to point this out to this group. Uh, it's not about the content that 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 we teach. It's the the, the whole uh, yes proficiency pr pr professional uh, teaching. Thank you. Yeah, but right now afterwards, it's going to be about policy making. So maybe we should probably change the view on teachers in itself and some how find ways for the policymakers to go into directions that support them better and give them more appreciation. So are there any uh, other comments or questions? Because uh, this would be the chance to have a little break before um, we go back to the, the main session um, at 4.10. Uh, at least a small coffee could be, could be suitable in this time. Thank you all uh, for um, taking part in this discussion. It was very interesting. And uh, see you all in the main session. Thank you. Thank you.
ไป